my name is Minisi T. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we will see everything about IS and LM model. We will see what is IS curve, derivation of IS curve, causes of shift in IS curve, what is LM curve, derivation of LM curve, causes of shift in LM curve with the equilibrium in money market and goods market and change in equilibrium of money market and goods market. So let's start it. There are mainly two types of market, money market and uh, goods market. According to classical economists, there is no relationship between these two markets. But according to J.M. Keynes, there is some relationship between these two markets. But J.M. Keynes uh, didn't explain much about this. That's why after Keynes, ISLM model was formed by J.R. Hicks. In his article named Mr. Keynes and Classics in 1937. In this article, he clearly explained how goods market affect money market with the help of ISLM model. IS represent equilibrium in goods market. Here I represent investment, S represent saving. LM represent equilibrium in money market. Here L means liquidity preference or we can say money demand. M represent money supply. So, what is IS curve? IS curve shows inverse relationship between interest rate and output. IS curve shows inverse relationship between interest rate and output. On X axis we have output or we can say that income. Y axis we have interest rate. Here you can see as interest rate increasing output of falling. On the other hand, as interest rate falling, output increasing. So here you can see inverse relationship between interest rate and output. And this horizontal curve will be called our IS curve. Now we'll see derivation of IS curve. Here we have three diagrams. All are interconnected with each other. In this diagram, on X axis we have investment. Y axis we have interest rate. In this diagram, on X axis we have output or we can say that income, Y axis interest rate. Here X axis output or we can say that income, Y axis aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And this curve represents aggregate supply, this curve represents aggregate demand which is equal to consumption and investment. C represents consumption, I represents investment. Our initial equilibrium point is E where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. Initial output is O, Y. Same output we will bring here, O, Y. Initial interest rate is O, R. Same interest rate we will bring here, O, R. Now suppose interest rate reduce from R to R1. Interest rate reduce from R to R1. R1 is our new interest rate. As we know, interest rate and investment have an inverse relation. As interest rate reduce, investment increase. That's why as interest rate reduce from R to R1, investment increase from I to I1 because both have inverse relation. Same R1 interest rate we will bring here. As investment increase, aggregate demand will also increase because aggregate demand consists of consumption plus investment. As investment increase, aggregate demand also increase. That's why aggregate demand curve shift forward from AD to AD1. This is our new aggregate demand curve. As aggregate demand increase, our output also increase from Y to Y1. Same output we will bring here, Y1. E1 is our new equilibrium point. When we join these two points, we will receive our investment curve. But when we join these two points, we will receive our IS curve. This is our IS curve, which represents inverse relationship between output and interest rate. As we earlier discussed, IS curve represents inverse relationship between interest rate and output. So this is our IS curve. Now we will see causes of shift in IS curve. IS curve shift due to change in factors that affect the aggregate demand. IS curve shift due to change in factors that affect the aggregate demand. As we know, aggregate demand equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. C represent consumption expenditure, I represent investment expenditure, G represent government expenditure, M represent import, X represent export. When we minus import from export, it will become equal to net export. 
this part represents net export. If consumption expenditure increase, investment expenditure increase, government expenditure increase or net export increase, then definitely our aggregate demand will also increase. When aggregate demand increase, IS curve shift rightward. When aggregate demand increase, IS curve shift rightward. On the other hand, if there is fall in uh, consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, government expenditure and net export, then eventually our aggregate demand also fall. And when aggregate demand fall, our IS curve shift leftward. So we can say that our IS curve mainly shift due to change in factors that affect our aggregate demand. Now we will see diagram of a shift in IS curve. As aggregate demand increase, IS shift rightward. But as aggregate demand fall, IS shift leftward. So in this diagram, you can see our initial equilibrium point is E. Same equilibrium point we will bring here, E. Initial aggregate demand is this one. Initial IS is this one. Now suppose aggregate demand increase from AD to AD1. New equilibrium point is E1. Same equilibrium we will bring here. Here you can see as aggregate demand increase, IS curve shift rightward from IS to IS1. This is our new IS curve. So we can say that as aggregate demand increase, IS shift rightward. But when aggregate demand fall from AD to AD2, our new equilibrium point is E2, same equilibrium point we will bring here. As aggregate demand fall, our IS shift leftward from IS to IS2. This is our new IS curve which has shifted leftward due to decrease in aggregate demand. So we can say that as aggregate demand increase, IS shift rightward, but as aggregate demand fall, IS shift leftward. Now we will see LM curve. LM curve represent money market. Here L represent liquidity preference or we can say that money demand. M represent money supply. And LM curve shows the relationship between output and interest rate. IS curve shows inverse relationship between output and interest rate. But LM curve shows positive relationship between output and interest rate. As interest rate increase, output also increase. As interest rate fall, output will also fall. Now we will see derivation of LM curve. Here we have two diagrams which are interconnected. On X axis here we have money demand and money supply. In this side we have interest rate. Here we have output and income. This side we have interest rate. MS curve represent money supply. Money supply curve is vertical because here we assume money supply is constant because money supply is decided by monetary authority. MS is money demand curve. E is equilibrium point because at this point money demand is equal to money supply. OR will be called equilibrium interest rate. Same OR interest rate we will bring here. This is same interest rate OR. And O, Y is equilibrium output or we can say that equilibrium income. Now suppose our income increase from Y to Y1. As income will increase, money demand will also increase. Obviously, when your income is continuous increasing, you will do more money demand for transaction purpose, for a precautionary purpose as well as for a speculative purpose. So we can say that as income increase from Y to Y1, money demand also increase from MD to MD1. This is our new money demand curve. E1 is our new equilibrium point. Here you can see money supply is constant. Only money demand is increasing. That's why interest rate will also increase from R to R1. R1 is our new interest rate. Same R1 interest rate we will extend here. Here you can see we have two point. When we join these two point, we will receive our LM curve. This is our LM curve which is showing positive relationship between output and interest rate. Now we will see causes of shift in LM curve. LM curve shift due to change in money supply and money demand. First of all, we will see how LM shift due to change in money supply. If money supply increase, then LM shift rightward. If money supply fall, then LM shift leftward. This one is initial money supply. 
एम एस दिस वन इज इनिशियल मनी सप्लाई इनिशियल इक्वली बीरियम ई सेम ई इक्वली बीरियम वी विल ब्रिंग हेयर इनिशियल एल एम इज दिस वन नाउ सपोज मनी सप्लाई हैज इंक्रीज एम वन एस वन इज न्यू मनी सप्लाई न्यू इक्वली बीरियम इज ई वन सेम इक्वली बीरियम वी विल ब्रिंग हेयर दिस इज न्यू एल एम करव here you can see due to increase in money supply our lm curve has shifted rightward from lm to lm1 this is our new lm curve which has shifted rightward due to increase in money supply so we can say that when money supply increase lm curve shift rightward but when money supply fall lm curve shift leftward now suppose money supply fall this one is our new money supply curve this one is our new equilibrium point same equilibrium point we will bring here this one is new lm curve here you can see due to increase due to decrease in money supply lm curve has shift to leftward leftward from lm to lm2 this is our new lm curve which has shifted leftward because of decrease in money supply so we can say that as money supply supply increase lm shift rightward but as money supply fall lm shift leftward now we'll see how lm shift due to change in money demand when money demand increase lm shift leftward when money demand fall lm shift rightward initial equilibrium point is e initial money demand is this one same initial equilibrium point e we will bring here initial lm is this one now suppose money demand increase from md to md1 new equilibrium point is e1 same equilibrium we will bring here and new lm is this one here you can see our lm has shifted leftward due to increase in money demand so we can say that as money demand increase lm shift leftward now suppose money demand fall from md to md2 this uh, this one is a new money demand this one is new equilibrium same equilibrium we will bring here and new lm is this one here you can see our lm has shifted rightward due to fall in money demand so we can say that when money demand increase lm shift leftward when money demand fall lm shift rightward now we will see equilibrium of money market and goods market i s represent a goods market i represent investment s represent saving every point of i s curve represent saving is equal to investment l m represent uh, money market l represent money demand or we can say the liquidity preference m represent money supply every point of l m shows uh, money demand is equal to money supply e will be called equilibrium point at this point both market are simultaneously is in equilibrium so e will be called equilibrium point where both market are in equilibrium or we can say that at this point investment saving money demand money supply all are equal to each other and equilibrium interest rate is or and equilibrium income is oy now we will see change in equilibrium of money market and goods market E is our initial equilibrium point where both market are in equilibrium now suppose there is no change in lm curve increase in uh, interest rate and income will lead to rightward shift in uh, is curve that means if income increase and interest rate increase then our is curve will shift rightward here you can see as income increase from y to y1 interest rate increase r to r1 then our is curve shift from is to is1 even is our new equilibrium point but decrease in income and decrease in interest rate will shift our is leftward here you can see as our income decrease from y to y1 interest rate decrease from r to r1 our is shift leftward from is to is1 and even is our new equilibrium point now we will see change in equilibrium due to rightward and leftward shift in lm curve e is equilibrium point but a uh, fall in interest rate and increase in income will shift lm curve rightward on the other hand increase in interest rate and reduce in income will shift lm curve leftward so this is all about lm and is model i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care